once was lost in sin, but Jesus took me in, and then a little light from heaven filled my soul. It was my heart in love and brought my name above, and then a little talk with Jesus made me more. Sometimes my path seems trail without a ray of cheer, and then a cloud of doubt may hide the light of day. The beast of sin may rise and hide the star disguise, but just a little talk with Jesus clears the way. Have a little talk with Jesus, tell him all about our troubles. It's our first uh, Bible study after the lockdown, and I thank God for awesome time we had in church on Sunday. We're we'll pushing forward the Word of God tonight, and uh, thank God for the privilege to be at His feet. I appreciate you. I trust that the Almighty God will send us His Word, and His Word will surely profit us in the name of Jesus. So let's pray together. Let's pray together. Our Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you because you are here with us. You are our teacher. We are proud of you. You are the one showing us the things of heaven so that right here on earth, you can make us fit for that heaven. I ask that after all this teaching, none of us will be unfit in the name of Jesus. Whatever you need to do in us, the virtue you need to add, the grace you need to reveal, oh God, the transformation you need to bring about so that we are fit for your glorious kingdom and we are fit to represent you here on earth. Father, I pray you will rot in us. You will do your work in us and we will never remain the same. Thank you, Jehovah, because we know you have had us. So you be the glory. At the instance of your word, let there be blessing, blessings of healing, blessings of transformation, blessings of change. Rub them in all of our lives in Jesus' name and make us agents of blessing. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And amen. Praise God. All right, so tonight we will consider the topic rewards for loving wisdom. Reward for loving wisdom wisdom you know uh, we've been studying in the book of proverbs so we are looking at chapter 8 and today we'll read from verse 1 to verse 21 alongside with the big part of our sermon on on uh, sunday
Sunday, you know, I was speaking on from Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 11 to verse, uh, I mean, chapter 11, verse 1 to verse 3. I will be looking at the verse 2 of that scripture today. But let's read Proverbs chapter 8, verse 1 to 21. I'm reading from the New King James Version. Now, does not wisdom cry out? And understanding lift up her voice. She takes a stand on the top of the high hill beside the way where the paths meet. She cries out by the gates at the entry of the city, at the entrance of the doors. To you, O men, I call, and my voice is to the sons of men. O you simple ones, understand prudence. And you fools be of an understanding heart. Listen, for I will speak of excellent things, and from the opening of my lips will come right things. For my mouth will speak truth. Wickedness is an abomination to my lips. And verse 8 All the words of my mouth are with righteousness. Nothing crooked or perverse is in them. They are all plain to him who understands and right to those who find knowledge. Receive my instruction and not silver and knowledge rather than choice gold. For wisdom is better than rubies, money, and all the things one may desire cannot be compared with her. I am wisdom. Dwell with prudence and find out knowledge and discretion. The fear of the Lord is to hate evil, pride and arrogance, and the evil way and the perverse mouth I hate. Counsel is mine and sound wisdom. I am understanding. I have strength. By me, kings reign. And rulers decree justice by need princes rule, and nobles, all the judges of the earth. I love those who love me, and those who seek me diligently will find me. Riches and honor are with me, enduring riches and righteousness. My fruit is better than gold, yes, than fine gold, and my revenue than choice silver. I traverse the way of righteousness in the midst of the path of justice that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth that I may fill their treasure. After all the introduction of wisdom, everything wisdom has to say about himself, but see the essence of wisdom speaking, the essence of teaching wisdom. It says in verse 21 that I may cause those who love me to inherit wealth, that I may fill their treasure. And that's my prayer. By the grace of God, after all your labor, all your hard work, you will inherit wealth. And the Lord will fill your treasury. None of us will labor in vain, but you must love wisdom. You cannot leave wisdom aside and uh, we are in pursuit of rubies we are in pursuit of our wealth without wisdom one may end up laboring in vain let me join that to ecclesiastic chapter 11 and verse 2 so that you will see what wisdom is saying and how wisdom will eventually how it will help you to inherit wealth and to, to fill your treasury with, of course, rubies and the pastelling. That's what you want to hear. Okay. Oh, the, the wisdom of God will fill you with pastelling in Jesus' name. Now, from the International Children Bible, I love that version, chapter 11, verse 2. It says, Invest what you have in several different businesses. You don't know what bad things might happen on earth. Now, the key concept from wisdom for our study tonight is invest and invest in several different businesses. And uh, 
you know, I, I'm, I'm going to, you know, be talking from a very large art because we, when you look at businesses, I'm not just talking about buying and selling and, uh, you know, making all the money here or not. You know, I'm talking about business, your own business, God's business, and business of others. You will have had people say, you know, when it comes to a particular issue, what are you going to do? Are you going to help? And they will ask you the question, what's my business in that? It means I don't, I don't have business with other people's business. What concerns them? If it doesn't concern me, I don't have business with it. You've got to change your mind. Your investment must go beyond your personal appetite. Must go beyond your person alone. You must invest in God, invest in others, in people, and invest in strangers. Invest, you know, all around as the Almighty God gives you the opportunity. It's wisdom to invest without saying, what is my own business there? Think beyond yourself. That's good investment. Because a time will come that all of them will yield. And you will be blessed with a yield of wisdom and a yield of investing. So, number one point, I'm saying that you should invest in yourself. At least charity begins from home. Let's begin with you. Invest in yourself. Jeremiah chapter 29, verse 4 to 6 from New King James Version it says, Thus says the Lord of hosts, the God of Israel. To all who were carried away captive, whom I have caused to be carried away from Jerusalem to Babylon, build houses and dwell in them. That's investment. Plant gardens and eat thereof. That's investment. Now take wives and beget sons and daughters and take wife for your sons and give your daughters to husband. So that they may bear sons and daughters that you may be increased there and not diminished. That's investment. Every good investment will bring you an increase. And that's the mind of God. If God intends to increase us, enlarge us on every side to the point that we can draw from our investment, we can see the increase of what we have invested into ourselves and unto others. So, I said that before you take a wife or husband, as we read from that scripture in Jeremiah 29, I said you should invest on yourself first before you bring others into your world, bring a, a, a wife, a husband or children into your world. Invest in education and invest in marketable skills so that you have what it takes to manage and enjoy the wife, the husband, the children that you are bringing into your world. You know, what most people, when it comes to thinking about themselves, when a preacher, for example, says, invest on yourself. I know most of my younger ones, uh, my children, they will think about investing in clothing. They want to buy the finest designers, you know, finest plots, you know, I see most of these school children, there is none of them you will see with school bag that is not a designer bag. You look at their shoes, it must be a designer shoe because that's what they understand as investment. Now, of course, it's an investment, but investment differ from investment. There are good investments, there are investments that brings you increase, I yield. I don't know what increase you find in all those designer stuff that you buy, but they are good, I'm not condemning them, no, but investment that will secure your now and your tomorrow goes beyond food, goes beyond clothing, it goes beyond shoes, you know, when you look at if all a man thinks of as the limit of his investment is what you wear, what you put on, how you look like, and all those stuff, raiment, food, what you eat. You are having your special meal in a special restaurant all of the time. Are you feel that's investing on yourself? I said that's the limit of a fool. They are good, but shouldn't be your, your limit. It's the limit of most people. 
that shouldn't be yours. Investment is more than this. More than food, more than clothing, more than apparel. When you let's read Matthew chapter 6, verse 25. Matthew chapter 6, verse 25, New King James Version. It says, Therefore, I say to you, do not worry about your life. Investing in your life doesn't mean worrying about your life. You are investing so that you will not have reason to worry about your life. Those who don't invest on their life is a function of time. A time is coming. They will have so many things to worry about about their life. They will worry about their old age, worry about their retirement, worry about taking care of family. They will worry about so many things because they don't invest on themselves. So Jesus said, therefore I say to you, do not worry about your life, what you will eat or what you will drink, nor about your body, what you will put on. Don't worry about them. You won't go naked. There will be clothing for you to, to wear. You won't go hungry. There will be food for you to eat. It's not life, more than food, and the body more than clothing. Therefore, you must invest in your life. Investment on your life is more than all these other fixtures that we provide for the body. So, and I say clearly, higher education is a good investment for yourself. Whatever value you add to yourself, that's you. You have improved your life, you have improved yourself. You are a primary school educated fellow, go for the higher one, go for secondary education. You've gotten secondary education. If God allows you, think about higher education. You can go to college, go to university, or acquire marketable skills. Marketable skill means skills that's knowing how to do one or two things that brings money to you, that adds value, you know, to others and generates income for you. Get those ones on. You know, marketable skill will certainly afford you food on your table, roof on your head, of course, shoes on your feet, and clothes on your body. Don't start with what you need to put on, what you need to eat. Start with what will enable you. And the enablers, education is an enabler. The acquiring skill, knowing how to do things. If you are going to do your pickup skill of Tailoring, come on, let it be for excellence. Train yourself, equip yourself, be good at your skill, and it will put food on your table. If you are learning whatever, is it plumbing is a wonderful skill, is it a electrician is a wonderful skill, learn it well to the point that you have the skill that you can sell, that's you investing on yourself and uh, if, if, if we are able to do that on the immediate when you eventually bring you know uh, 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 others into your life you bring a wife into your life or you get into another man's life you become a wife uh, you, you know uh, onto another man onto another man all you will realize is that you have made provision you've provided a garden for your family that family will be catered for because you have invested on yourself if you don't invest yourself and you are building and putting family together you are endangering lives i pray god will help us so beyond the immediate of taking care of our day-to-day -day necessity you know, uh, by investing on ourselves, you will also right now begin to think according to what the scripture says. Investing, putting your investment in diverse and many businesses, you will need to begin to think about your future and retirement. Most people don't think about it until they get there. And I say you don't need to get to the age of retiring before you appreciate, before you understand, before you get to the point of knowing that you must invest and make provision 
for that future. Wisdom makes you see, think, and plan for days and years to come. The little which should not be less than your tithe, which is 10% of your income. The little that little as little as that, you know, which should not be less than 10% of your income, must be set apart for investment into businesses. It can be your business or other people's business. You know, when you are investing in other people's business, you call it, you know, buying share in that business. That if you buy a share, it means you are sharing in their business. So you are investing into the business. And it could be direct investment into land, into building, but that investment must be what has a future growing value. You can put your money, make sure you are setting something apart for the future. Some authority recommends even something higher than your tithe. Recommends 15%. I tell you the truth, it's not easy to put that apart, or it's wisdom to put something apart, not just saving. You know, saving is different from investment. Saving is keeping your money somewhere for someone else to use it and giving you tiny interest. Investment is you applying it directly into what will bring you an increase tomorrow. So I pray God will open our eyes where we'll be able to do what we need to do, you know. So but let's read from Genesis chapter 24, verse 1. Genesis 24, verse 1. Bible says, Now Abraham was old, retirement, retirement age. Abraham was old, well advanced in age, retirement age. And the Lord had blessed Abraham in all things. This is wisdom. And this is where I'm trusting God. By the time we are all arriving at our old age, some are there already, and I praise God for the good life they are living. I thank God for when I, each time I see all our mommies, all our daddies in the church, you know, I, I praise God for them genuinely. May I tell you and say to you clearly, some of our major, major founders in this church, those who support the church and keep church going, are these elderly in their old age. And it's amazing. You may not find you may not find it easy to believe, but they are the regular faithful givers in this church. If they have not provided for their old age, they will not be able to give. In fact, they will have nothing to give. And some give not just you know time. They give in the hundreds of pounds regularly. What an amazing, amazing plan they must have planned for their old age. If them permit us, they are the kind of uh, people I would have loved to teach us in preparing for our retirement. Because that's a perfect example. And my prayer is that by the time those of us in our middle age, you are 40, 50, 60, by the time we are arriving at old age, at retirement, you will not, we will not arrive there as paupers. God will have helped us we will be like Abraham, because that's the meaning of singing all of the time. Singing all of the time, Abraham blesses a man. It means you are arriving at your old age, you are, when you are well advanced in age, and with the Lord's blessing. The Lord has blessed you in all things. You have a house to put your head, you are not a tenant, no, but because you are not working there. You know, you don't need anyone chasing you out at all day because you can't pay rent. You've provided you have a house over your roof, over your head. And like a brother shared with me sometimes, not in our church, is from, from another church. And he said, you know the plan I'm having, Pastor, and I'm almost getting there. I'm presently paying mortgage, not rent. I'm praying that it won't be too long. I have a plan for it that I will be mortgage free. It's good to arrive at old age, mortgage free. You have finished paying your mortgage. No debt on you, no, no bank coming to harass you. Oh, you miss your mortgage, we are repossessing. None of us will be in that shape. But it takes you responding to wisdom now and planning for the future. Planning for retirement. Don't arrive at your retirement age miserable. 
We don't want to see that happen. We don't want to be in that shape at all. We don't want to arrive at old age still suffering and smiling. Three other investments we need to help us in our old age and beyond. Number one is investing in God. Then someone will have said, it's not my business. Let God take care of what concerns him. Ah, uh, somebody is not wise enough. If you pay attention to wisdom, you will know that why you still may, why the energy is there, the opportunity is there. That's why we learned last Sunday that we should do good. Don't, you know, don't change lane. Do good everywhere you find yourself. You find yourself in God's kingdom, do good, invest in that kingdom. Because what you invest is coming back to look for you. You know, most Christians don't do it. They don't invest in God, God's kingdom. They just seek after God, after his gold, after his blessing. Don't do that. Matthew chapter 6, Jesus instructed very clearly on that. Verse 19 to verse 20, New King James Version. Verse 19 to verse 20. It says, do not lay up for yourselves treasures or not. Have your blessings or not. Have whatever you need to have your investment on that, there's no treasure. Do not clear up your treasures on that. We are moth and rust destroy and we are thieves breaking and steal. But lay up for yourself treasures in heaven. We are neither moth nor rust destroys and we are thieves do not break in and steal. And I ask the question and let's stay and ponder on it. When your treasure is laid up in heaven, when you have your investment in God's kingdom, you know, in heaven, represented on earth, and uh, I ask the question, there must be a payback from every, every investment. There must be a payback for everywhere you have your treasure. You have your treasure in the bank. The bank will normally give you interest. <laughs> now, the result of laying up your treasure in heaven with God as our chief treasurer is that at any time you look up, you can always draw from heaven. Because your, your, your treasury in heaven is not empty. There is something there you can draw from. We can always look up. Like the psalmist said, I will lift up my eyes to the hills from where my help comes from. Help will always come. Is the help is the kind of dividend we get for investing in God and in God's kingdom. God needs you, He needs your investment, and you will never get to a point that you knock God's door and it will not be open unto you. When you see that scripture, Matthew chapter 7, verse 7. Say, ask, you will receive. It's for those who have treasure in heaven. You can always ask heaven and you receive. You have something there. Seek and you will find. Because you have a treasure in heaven, you can seek everything heavenly. Help from heaven, you can seek heaven's intervention. And you will find. You will find. Knock the door of heaven. It will be open to you. All because you have a treasure there. Isaiah said in Isaiah chapter 46, verse 4, see the commitment of the Almighty God for those who invest in him. It's part of preparing for the future, for retirement. Because it gets to the point at old age, that's the time we cannot really do much for ourselves. We rely on God and others, you know. So see what God says and what, what a promise keeper is God. In Isaiah chapter 46 verse 4, even to your old age, I am he, I'm not going to change. And even to your great years, I will carry you. Well, you can no longer carry yourself. You know, you can't jump here and there. God commits to his investors. I will carry you. I have made you. And I will bear you. Even I will carry and will deliver you. These are dividends. Those who invest in God's kingdom enjoy. 
That's why you see they are old age. God is taking care of them. If you want to understand this scripture, go and look into the life of our aged one in the church. You see God carrying them, taking care of them, extending life to them, healing their diseases, bearing them up on ego's wing, and renewing their age year to year. And he says, even I will carry you and deliver you. Many people have perished, but God is delivering them. And that's what he's doing to us in our days of youth. And in old age, he promises to do that. Number two, when you are investing into your future, always, you know, I've studied investing in God, investing in his kingdom. That's what wisdom will teach us. Number two, so you can enjoy God. Number two, invest in your children. Invest in your children. Don't just have children in their numbers and uh, you don't care, you know, uh, how they come up. You don't see them as an investment unit. If there is anything that should take the, the larger proportion of your income, is your children. You know, at least that's one thing I can say from my own family. Yeah, children takes much more than any other thing from our income. Looking after them, education, everything here and there, they are the one. They are the one. And because God has given them to us, not just as children, they are our investment center. You spend on them to look after them and uh, you look forward to their tomorrow. Good investment in your children when you are still strong, you are still able to earn income, will be so rewarding when you become old and weak. I just pray that none of our children will be fooled. Foolish children will never know. They will even forget that their parents invested on them. At times, they will feel whatever they have become today is, the, is their own ability. They will never know. They will never remember. Only foolish children will not remember that. I am what I am today by the grace of God and for the commitment and investment of my parents. And children, I instruct me, you never forget that your parents invested on you all their lives, their working life. Since you come into their life as a baby, they have been investing on you. May you grow up and become good investment that will be rewarding to your parents in the name of Jesus. When children arise in strength, they eventually become old and they are strong. You know, your children will arise then in strength and in blessing. They will become a strength to you. You know, you are weak now on account of age, but they are strong and they become your strength. They become a blessing to you. They become like your arrow, like Psalm 127, Verse 4 puts it like arrows in the hand of a warrior. So are the children of one's youth, the children you have when you were young. You know, now that you are old, you will see those children. They are your strength, your pride. They are like arrows in your hand. They are the ones that still make you feel like a warrior, like, like a strong man. You know, I pray God will keep all these children for us in the name of Jesus. And also in Proverbs chapter 1 verse 28, when you look at the story of the virtuous woman, the Bible says, our children, because she invested on them right early, take care of them, get to the market, do our business, you know, get food for them and do so many things. She invested on the children. And Bible says in verse 28 of Proverbs 31, that our children will rise up and call her blessed. And that's the day we are all looking for, that all these children that we are still seeing, crawling around, you know, just uh, studying, you know, eating all our food, there will be a day. And that day is coming quickly. Education will have been completed. God will begin to position them and they will just arise one by one. They will arise so rich, so blessed, so godly, and they will look towards mommy, towards daddy, 
Daddy, you are blessed for having me. Mommy, you are blessed for having me, for being the womb that carried me and the womb that, deli that, deli that delivered me. You are blessed. And they become a blessing in your hand. They don't need to struggle or stress for anything. They will do it for you. Money, they will resource you because God has blessed them. Your investment on them will begin to yield. I pray that none of us will labor in vain on our children in Jesus' name. So keep investing on them. The Lord will keep them and keep your investment. It will yield as the Lord tarries. Number three, don't forget those two. I told you as you are investing into your future, think about a very good investment because God will take care of you. You will be able to do the asking and receiving, the seeking and finding, the knocking and doors being opened unto you. Invest on your children. They will become your arrow and they will become your strength and your blessings tomorrow. And number three, which is very important, others may say, it's none of my business. Hey, those children are not my children. <laughs> I'm asking you to invest in other people. See, each time you look down and you see a soul in need of a pull or a push, do not ignore them. Don't look the other side. Look straight into that opportunity to pull somebody up or to push somebody forward. If it is in your power to help them climb the ladder of life, help, help. Because it's a seed you are sowing, it's an investment you are making. If it's in your power to, to help them, go ahead and help. Make that investment. Because later in life, you will reap what you have sown. It's on your way up that you are able to help, is it not because you are on top that you are able to pull someone below? A time will be coming, you are on your way downward to strength is abating, and that you are unable to do many things, you equally need help of somebody. You will meet some of these people and others like them along the way of life that will lend you a helping hand. Galatians chapter 6 verse 7 says, do not be deceived. God is not mocked. For whatever a man sows, that he will also reap. If it has been all about yourself or through your life, you're just taking care of yourself, you care about no other person, you know that you are going to be so lonely at your old age. No, nobody will care about you. Nobody will ask after you. You know that's what you sow. The Bible says don't be deceived about that. If you want to enjoy a glorious old age that people remember you and they want to be around you, they want to help you, they just want to do something for you and create life around you, start creating that life for others today. Start remembering people and lending helping hand. Don't shut your bowel of mercy. Don't close your eyes. Don't change lane, you know, onto the other side all because you don't want to I help others or you don't see others as a, a subject of, of help or having anything to do with you directly. Let us invest in others and God Almighty he will bless us in Jesus' name. So don't fall into that deception because God is not more. And I put it in my note that you should remember the law of karma. You know, the evil you do will locate you, you will reap it, or oh, the same thing with the good you do. The, the, the kindness you show today is coming back, it will, it will locate you, it will. The Lord bless you. So it is good and godly to do something for nothing, in, not in anticipation, okay, what is in it for me? In my country, that's the language, and that's what destroyed that country till today. People will always, in anything and everything, they are looking for what is in need for them. We were planting church in Nigeria, and then uh, we had one or two uh, men of God that were in position to help us. 
And they actually started, oh, this is a church from London, wanting to plant church in Nigeria. You know the expectation? They didn't tell us directly at the beginning what is in it. They thought pounds is coming easily with that work like that. And we are coming to just expend money, you know, to expand God's kingdom. Month one, month two, month three, that they couldn't get what they were expecting. You see how their love for the work fizzled out. They forgot about the work. They forgot. In fact, they, they abandoned the work. Sooner than they abandoned it and God took over, it's what began to flourish. Church began to, to prosper in the eyes of those who are just regular, normal children of God who are ready to do something for nothing. If you have that mind in you, doing something for God, something for others, something for your family, for nothing. You see, God will bless you because those things you are doing, they are coming back to locate you. Acts chapter 20, verse 35, it says, I have shown you in every way by laboring like this, that you must support the way. I've shown you, that's a perfect example. You must support the way and remember the word of the Lord Jesus that he said, it is more blessed to give than to receive. Not many people learn that lesson. Not many people. Because you hardly will see people with that mind. Oh, it's more blessed to give than to receive. What everybody is after is we are to receive, we are to get. We just want to grab and grab and grab. We are God's children, let's be different people. Pay attention to the scripture and God will bless you. Also take note, I said don't do kill pro kill. Don't do it. A favor for a favor. That's the reason why you are showing favor. It has no future value. Favor for a favor. It has no eternal value. No. When you are showing favor, showing kindness, show it for nothing. Knowing fully well, Galatians 6, 7, that it is not in vain. It's an investment. It will surely bring a yield. But don't start looking out for So what is in it for, for, for me? Reason why someone will not pay tight in church is it's as simple as that. Quick procure. What is in it? We are giving 10%. What is our share in the church? We are giving God 10% of our money. This is so much money. What is in it for us? We are showing favor to the church. For which favor are we receiving? Don't do that. God's children don't do kill pro kill. We don't look for favor for favor. Goodness for goodness. Yo, yo, if I do this, what are you going to do for me? They do know for sure that the kindness you show today is waiting for you tomorrow. Every seed you sow, of course your seed can never be a waste and it will never, never be a waste in Jesus' name. Let's follow great example of people like Anjaze Gozi Bojazu. Someone say, which name is that pastor? Anjaze Gozi Bojazu, as the name of a woman you know very well, that because of the goodness, the good she has done, most people, if a majority don't know her real name, they know her by the given name when she began to do good here and there. Now let me call her by the name you know her so, so that we can forget about Anjaze, Gonze, Bojazu. I hope I pronounce those names well. Let's call her Mother Teresa. Because that's, our, that, that, that's, our, that's not our original name. This is a woman that has no children of her own, but she took care of millions of children. She, was, she dedicated her life to cater for the sickly, for the, for the lonely and the lost children, hopeless children, particularly in India. The city of Kolkata can never forget this woman. Calcutta. Because she spent her life sooner than she finished from her, 
uh, seminary, you know, Sister Teresa, she fully took a commission as a, a full-time uh, assistant. She became Mother Teresa and she began that work of, of goodness. Just helping people along, investing in people. At the end of the day, Mother Teresa became a mother indeed. She touched the world and her life was never ordinary. She wasn't an ordinary woman. She grew up great, she died great. And I'm sure she's rewarded with heaven. I've spoken to you this evening by, by, by the Spirit of the Almighty God and uh, paying attention to what the Lord will want us to do. Wisdom has spoken. The intention of everything we have learned tonight is that God may cause you to inherit wealth because you love wisdom. If you love wisdom, you will pay attention to this teaching. I'm sure somebody has taken note. You know which area you want to revisit in your life, which kind of investment you want to start making about your life, and start with yourself. Invest in yourself. It could be so daunting. I was speaking with, you know, share, sharing message, you know, WhatsApp message with his sister, you know, and she was investing in her education, higher education, and she found it so challenging. She told me, I told my husband, I can't continue with this, I want to stop it. The husband gave a frown because the husband will want her to continue, and that is it. Don't give up when you start investing on yourself. You may feel it's too much. You may feel the burden that you are going to enjoy the blessing. Bear the burden today. The blessing is waiting for you tomorrow. Because every good investment will never leave you the same. Push through. When the load appears too heavy, keep carrying it. Let's carry it through. It's like a woman in labor. You can't abort that labor. You can't afford better to push through until you see your baby. And see your baby is well until you finish the labor. I pray today that God will help all of us to the finishing line. You will not labor halfway. We will labor through and we will see the fruit of our labor. Bible says in every labor, there is a reward. And you won't miss that reward. All of my children that are in education never Take is you know take a holiday and feel uh, I think it's enough. I finished college and I think it's enough. Invest in higher education. You are still young, or you become as old as myself now. You may not be able to because you have so many other things to do. You have got to serve. You have the gospel to spread. You will. It will be education at my age. Be at your age. You are a teenager. You are in your early twenties. I challenge you, invest for yourself. Invest in your education. Before you start settling down, because God will, he will be so faithful to settle all of you nicely and pray for you by the time you get to the time of marrying. God will bless our daughters with good husband. Good husband that will complement your life and make your life a, 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 a joyous one. God will do that. Same way we do for our, our young men. Don't worry about God settling you. We settle you nicely. But invest on yourself. So you will be a prized asset. A prized individual. A well-invested soul. And see how God will begin. You know, it's at the level you are that God will package you. God will package you well in Jesus' name. And it will cost you to inherit wealth. And it will fail you with treasures in the name of Jesus. Think of when you will become old. You know, let's don't let us just think every you know this is how we will be. We are growing old, all of us. And it will be so it won't be a form that you are growing old without preparing for that old age. I've I've I've, I've spoken on all days. But I think it's time for us to ask the Almighty God. You know Let's tell him that we love wisdom, we love what you have taught us, but make us wise. That we may act in wisdom, we may plan in wisdom, we may arise in wisdom and do what we have to do. The scripture is so clear.
that we should invest, you know, we should invest in everything that, in all businesses that will make room for our better tomorrow. Invest in several different businesses. I've shown you invest in your children. That's, you might don't say it's not your business. Let the children take care of themselves. Invest in God. Invest in other people. Invest. Invest in your community. They are all coming back to give you a good and a rich year. So that when you arrive at old age, you will be like Abraham. God will have blessed you in everything. So settle. Nothing to worry about. Because you are well provided for sufficiently that you have more than enough to live for the children that are behind you. Let's pray. Just ask the Almighty God this evening for wisdom, the, the grace to love wisdom, to embrace wisdom, and to act in wisdom. We are God's children and we are, we are privileged to have Jesus Christ, the wisdom of God, as the one that dwells in us. Wisdom can't dwell in us and we are still foolish. Father, we, re we refuse everything that has to do with foolishness. When we are rising strength to do whatever and everything we have to do, when we do good to ourselves, good to others, good to your kingdom, when we invest severally, of course, in your kingdom, we will invest in ourselves, we invest in others. You will bless our today and secure our tomorrow. That your name may be glorified and we will be exemplary Christian in our generation. Please, Lord, for our aged ones that have arrived at their old age already, continue to carry them for us. Keep them going, keep them strong. Father, until they see your face in glory, I pray that you will not permit any ridicule in their lives. And for all of us that are in our prime, young, and still laboring, I pray you will energize us, you will resource us, as, and you will equip us with wisdom. We will love wisdom. All our moves, our actions, plans, will show that we are wise Christians. Father, we thank you. To you be the glory. Please bless all your children. Let your blessings distinguish our lives. We thank you for the answer. I ask that you will bless our offering tonight. Accept our gift as we invest into your kingdom and your church. Let all our investment become so productive and bring us increase. Thank you for the answer. Continue to preserve your word for us and give us grace to have the time for your word and be doers of this word. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your holy name. I pray through this pandemic lockdown, you will continue to take care of all of us. Nobody, none among us will become a victim of this pandemic in Jesus' name. Keep us safe. Keep us for your glory. And keep your church intact. Shall anyone have need of your touch for healing? Almighty God, dispense healing on them. Please touch them. Kill them in Jesus' name. Let there be no loss. Let no evil locate any of our homes. Keep us for your glory. We thank you, Lord Jesus. Until we meet again at your feet on Sunday, I pray you will keep all of us godly, make us good, and help us to do good things. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. And amen. Praise the Lord. I appreciate God in your life, and I thank you for encouraging your church on. Continue to connect in worship online like this. We will meet again on Sunday. And be good enough to share the message with those you love. You are investing on them if you share good word with them. We encourage somebody. There is somebody in your life that this word will, will, will bless. Share the message. It costs nothing. And the Lord will bless you for doing that. 
God bless you. Have a wonderful week. And I love you. Bye. Yeah. And it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running over again. And it will come back to you when you give, give to the Lord. Help me out now. Here we go. Yeah. And it will come back to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, and running Smile on your face. Give as the Lord has given to you.